We bought an entire cow. Not as a pet, but as a fuel source. So let's talk about our experience buying an entire share of beef. So this is not even all the beef. It all came in these nice boxes. So it really did come packaged very nicely yep. and everything is double wrapped. We also have an entire box of bones over here. And that actually was no extra charge. She's like, you could have whatever Super bones you want. excited about that. Okay, let's start putting this stuff in our freezer. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're gonna find all of the different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we buy a gigantic cow, you'll be alerted to it. So recently we made the decision to purchase an entire share of beef. And we did this for a few reasons. First of all, beef prices are going through the roof. Crazy. And we wanted to be able to lock in at least the current prices, if not save a little bit of money. The other thing is we wanted to be able to have a little bit better quality beef because normally we're going to Sam's Club or Walmart or whoever happens to have the cheapest beef. Special meat. And we wanted to get better quality beef, especially considering we each eat between one to two pounds a day of beef. <laughs> so we wanted really good quality meat. And lastly, we wanted to be able to support a local rancher. Yeah, it's definitely been a dream of mine. A lot of my family's from the Arcadia area, which is like the cattle country of Florida. It's a little harder for us to find cows in Florida. We're not in Omaha, right? right. We're in South Florida. So it was, a, it was always a dream of mine for us to buy a cow, but I was a little bit worried because I was afraid that fresh cow taste would be different than what I was used to and that we would have this giant amount of meat that I wasn't excited about. That was what I was afraid of. The other thing that Rachel was worried about was the money. Yes. Because we were purchasing an entire share of beef. Now we ended up paying $5.49 per pound for hanging weight, uh, which equated to right around uh, $6.40 a pound for the actual beef but it was a $2,700 outlet. That is a ton of money for us. I have to think to myself, this is probably gonna last, you know, eight, 10 months yeah. of food. I mean, it, who knows though? I mean, it's Rachel, right? I could put away some food. We may be done with this entire cow by Saturday. Like, I don't know. Now, the other thing for that was that what helped us make this decision to finally do this was over the 60 days of doing beef, butter, bacon, and egg, we started experimenting with other cuts of beef. Prior to that, we pretty much stuck to three things. We had brisket, mm -hmm. we had steaks, which were usually either ribeyes or New York strips, and we had ground beef. We didn't touch anything else. No. And then when we were doing beef, butter, bacon, eggs, because we wanted to have like a variety, right. we started experimenting with roasts and other things. And when you purchase an entire share of beef, you get a variety of different things. So that kind of helped us go like, okay, I'm comfortable eating flank steak. I'm comfortable eating, you know, a chuck roast and different things like that. Yeah, I love the fact that, now this was us getting a full share. You don't always get to have so much input with the butcher, you know, if you're doing like a half share or mm -hmm. a quarter of a share. But since this was our cow, you know, we got to talk to the butcher and find out like, you know, exactly how much did we want to be ground beef? How much did we want in, in steak? How much did we want in roast? And we love that. And I'm really glad that we did this post BBB and E because yes, I love roasts. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about how we did this, what our experience was like, how we found you know, uh, the ranch that we ended up going to. The damn ranch. Now again, we are in Florida and
And if you are in Florida, we went to a place called The Dam Ranch. Rachel that, loves the isn't name. Isn't that super funny? Uh, the owner's name is Kathy. They are just a small family farm uh, located in the Bradenton, Florida area, which is about three and a half hours from us. They're centrally located in the state. And that was perfect for us. And we chose them for a few reasons. Number one, they were close to us compared to a lot of the other ranches here in Florida. Yeah. But there were some other things that I liked. First of all, they gave us the option to purchase a full share, whereas a lot of the ones we were finding, they were only a quarter or a half and we really wanted to get a full share. But also the price. Their price was much cheaper than a lot of the other ranches. And then the thing that Rachel really liked, they didn't require a deposit from us. No, I thought that that really showed confidence in their product because she knew, hey, if you guys don't show up when you're supposed to, then there is another family that's waiting in line for the next cow. So this cow is not going to waste. Now, I did like the fact that she wanted to make sure that she got with us on when the processing of the cow would take place yeah. because this isn't a cow that's been sitting around in her freezer for months. And while we were shopping for the ranch that was right for us, um, it's not just because funny names, but um, it was also the fact that we ran into some ranchers that were like, yeah, this thing was, you know, killed four months ago. And I'm like, I don't want something that maybe has just been sitting in your freezer for yeah. this long. Now, if you aren't in Florida, uh, there is a great website. I'm gonna leave a link for it down below. That's actually how we located the damn ranch. You can go on there and there's an entire list of local ranchers based on wherever you are in the country. And not just for shares of beef, but you can find lamb, you can find venison, you can find pasture raised poultry. So whatever you're looking for, it is a great resource. So again, I will leave a link for that down below. So getting back to the process, we researched all the different ranchers. We looked for reviews of them. We settled on the damn ranch and we ended up calling her up. She said, we don't have to give a deposit, just give this. And again, we chose a full share of beef, although she does actually run it as a co-op to basically link people up who don't want a full share of beef. Either the A, they don't want to spend that kind of money or B, maybe they don't have the storage room. Yeah. So she allows people to buy just a quarter of a share or a half a share, and then she matches them up with other people. The only issue with that is, at least with her, and I know every rancher is different, when you're doing it that way, they have specific cuts so that everybody gets the same amount. You know, you don't you don't want to buy a half a share of beef and then find out somebody else got all of your ribeyes. Right. So everybody gets the same amount of thing. Whereas, like Rachel said, when we purchased the full share, we got complete control. So we ordered the, the, the full share of beef. It took about six weeks. And then she messaged us and said, OK, uh, this is when we're going to be ready. It's going to head off to the butcher. They're going to do some aging. They're going to do everything up. I want you to contact the butcher. And then the butcher is going to ask you, like, how do you want everything cut up? Well, and when we were talking to her, when we came to pick up the meat, it was interesting. She was like, I'm shopping for a second backup butcher because there are so many orders coming in now. She's, she's pretty confident. She's got orders all the way to April of next year, which is amazing but she said yeah that is such a skill that you know finding a butcher that you can really rely on that that does things so professional like that's really that that's the job to get yeah now once we did talk to the butcher uh him himself was amazing because he really walked us through he was like okay what kind of meat do you like how do you like to prepare things and i told him most of our cooking is done on a grill or in a smoker and I said, we really, we want ground beef, we want steaks, and we want roast. I said, I want as many steaks and roasts as possible. So he recommended, you know, turning this into ground beef, leaving this as a roast, whatever it may be. He asked me, how thick do I want each steak? How many do I want in each package? How big do I want the ground beef? And just went through everything with me and said that this is gonna be your best option. Fast forward about another 15 days, we stopped, we picked up everything. It was in boxes in Kathy's freezer. They'd only been there for about a day or two. Yes, and I was amazed. I don't know what I was still thinking of because this is this is city folk buying a cow. Like I'm hoping that this video will help somebody else that's never bought 
you know, an animal from a local farm before. Mm -hmm. Because our experience, I went in thinking we're going to have a giant carcass in the back of our truck bed. And like, are we going to have to get a buzz saw? Like, how are we going to have, I mean, this isn't like, you know, you've hunted for an animal and now you have to field dress it yourself and like wrap it up, you know? So I was very pleased at how beautiful and professional everything looked. Everything was in gorgeous boxes with handles on them and every single, as you're gonna see, um, individual roast and steak and, and, and the ground beef is all just put together so nicely. Yeah. So everything was frozen. We were able to bring it in our truck and in our RV and it would fit in most cars. You yeah. could just stack up all the boxes in your back seat unless you have like a smart car or something like that and into your trunk. Pretty much we could have fit everything into my truck if it wasn't for the fact that we were carrying bicycles. So I, I want to say we had maybe eight to 10 boxes yeah. total. And we also requested all of the bones because we could use them for bone broth. And Tabitha. And we can also give some fresh bones to Tabitha, which if you've ever been to a grocery store and tried to buy dog bones, they can get very expensive. And a lot yeah. of times they roast them, which makes them more brittle, which is not good for dogs. So I like the fact that we are able to give her some fresh bones. So we got everything home, we packed it in the freezer, and if you're curious, it pretty much filled up one stand-up freezer. The only thing that's not in that freezer is about 60 pounds of ground beef, and that's what our smaller freezer, and then most of the bones, which we put in the other one. Now, we could have fit it all into one freezer, but since I have two freezers, why try to Spread cram it, it all in there? Because again, I am worried the fact that we have $2,700 in beef out there and what if somebody leaves the door or something open? So right. we wanna make sure the door closes and then we can get it all locked. So let's get into how does it come? Yeah, what does it look like? So all of the ground beef came in packages like They're this. They're like little gifts. They're all separated into one pound packages. There's some frost on there because we have it sitting out of there, but I love this little bag. And I like the fact that it is packaged in one pound packages, even though we usually need more than one. Sometimes we only need one, you know? Or the boys want to get something for themselves. Yeah, so the fact that I can take two of these out or one of them out or four of them out, depending on what I need, and because they're in one pound packages, they do defrost fairly quickly. Usually we can put them on the counter or we put them in the sink and they defrost within an hour. If you put them in your refrigerator, they will definitely defrost overnight. So that's how our ground beef came. The roasts all came packaged like this and you can see everything is labeled what yes. it is. And then the same thing with the steaks. And with the steaks, we requested all of our steaks to be wrapped, uh, to be cut, first of all, into one and a quarter inch steaks. And there's two per package. And you can see there's two in here. This is coming right out of the freezer, so it's gonna be kind of hard to show you that. But they are nice, thick steaks. Double and wrapped. again, everything that we got, other than the ground beef, is double wrapped. So everything is all wrapped in plastic wrap. And then it is wrapped in freezer butcher paper. And uh, I was really impressed because I was able to just put everything into the freezer and I have it in sections. So I have the ground beef over here. I have the prime ribs over here. I have, you know, the ribeyes over here. I have the flank steak. It helps. So everything is in sections so I can reach in and grab, hey, I wanna have a New York strip today. Yeah, it, it really helps to organize it. You know, honestly, we should have been doing this ourselves all along with the meats that we purchased from the store. Like right. it's so nice to be able to reach in and know exactly what's in there, not just like a mystery meat bag, right? So I was very, very impressed at how beautiful everything came. And there was Zilcho smell. There was, yep. I mean, everything. So you just knew like this, this was good stuff. Yep. You want to get into how much we got and what we got yeah. of the ground beef and, and of everything. So let's go over our entire beef order. Now, again, we bought an entire share of beef. Also, you have to remember, these are not like the 1500 pound cattle that grocery right. stores are dealing with. This is a local cow that or local beef that is raised on the pasture here in Florida. And Florida does have a lot of pasture land. They do. And, uh, you know, so it wasn't a giant cow and it is also all grass fed, grass finished. And basically he had one bad day. I was gonna say, we, we were able to see some of the uh, brothers and sisters of this cow that was like right there, you know, on the property, which was really nice to see, okay, well, this is about the size. This is, you know, the amount of meat that we're getting and this is the size cow. 
super loved animals that are, yes, just having one bad day, totally taking care of their entire life in one bad day. And I, I, I wish that for all of the animals that we eat. Yeah. We're very, very grateful for the opportunity to, to eat these animals and we want them treated right. That's right. So going over all of the food and, and the different cuts that we got, we ended up with 167 pounds of ground beef. So wow. we have 167 packages like that. We got nine top round, top round roasts, which I don't have everything out no, here, obviously. No, this is like a big, good size um, roast. So we got nine top round roasts with each one of them weighing approximately four pounds. So some are like three and a half pounds, some are four and a half pounds, but they all weigh about four pounds. We got three packages of top round steaks. Oh yeah. Uh, with four pounds per each package. And I think these are the New these, York strips. These are strip steaks. Uh, we got 13 chuck roasts. Now, a lot of times people actually take the chuck roast and they turn that into ground beef. But again, we told them we wanted to have more right. roast. So if you don't want chuck roast, I could have easily told the butcher that like, hey, take the chuck roast, maybe give me a couple of them and turn a lot more into ground beef. But chuck roasts are great. You can cook it like a brisket, like a poor man's brisket. Smoke it like a brisket. Or you can also make a pot roast with it. There's a lot of different things you can do with it. And all you have to do is Google search for recipes. Maybe just change things up if a recipe is calling for sugar or something like that. Yeah. We got 14 sirloin steaks at one and a quarter pounds per steak. Nice. Uh, 20 New York strip steaks at about a pound a piece. And these are two. And so there's two in here. Uh, we got 12 packages of short ribs at two and a half pounds per package. And again, the weight is an approximate. Some right. are a little bit more, some are a little bit less. We got two briskets at five pounds a Yay. piece. 24 ribeye steaks. Hello, Dolly. At one pound a piece. Uh, we have one prime rib roast, which was about four pounds. Uh, we got four sirloin tip roasts which uh, weighed uh, about four pounds a piece. I've got a whole list of everything we got up there. Uh, we got uh, eight bottom round roasts, and I think that's what that one is over there. Yeah, that's, that's a bottom round is. roast right there. It's a good Great size. for roast beef. Each one of those weighs about three pounds. We got two eye round roasts, weighing about four pounds a piece. Nine packages of filet mignon. Each one is a pound. They're adorable. And then we got two flank steaks at about one and a half pounds a piece. Four skirt steaks at two pounds a piece. And then we got all of the bones and we got the oxtail. Yeah. Now you may be wondering what happened to the offal. And what we did was we asked them it's to in there. Uh, just take all the heart and take the liver, grind it all up and throw it in with all the ground beef. So there's not an overly liverly liver taste to any of the ground beef because we basically took the one liver, the one heart, and we threw it into 167, 167 pounds. pounds of ground beef. So you're getting the benefits from it, but you're not getting that taste. And we're using the entire animal. I love that. Now let's talk about the taste, because this is something that Rachel was really concerned about. I was super concerned about, and the only way that I can describe the steak taste is it tastes like a whole food steak. It's It tastes like the steak that you go ahead and purchase when it's your birthday or your anniversary and you're like, I'm getting the good stuff. Right. So we've had steak from like Walmart, we've had steak from other discount stores and it's like good enough Right. Like it's you're treating yourself to a steak because it's not cheap. But if you've had like a restaurant quality steak, that's what it tastes like. Mm -hmm. And the hamburger, I think, just tastes like ground beef that I am used to. It yeah. did not taste wild. You know, we've talked about this in a vlog. We have purchased pigs and then like started cooking them within like two hours of the slaughter. And there's almost like a gaminess right. to it. There's a wild taste to it. But these have been aged for 20 days. Um, so I, I don't know if that process really helps it, but it, it made it taste delicious to me. Now, as far as the ground beef, uh, the percentage in there, he said it's approximately 90-10. But basically what they do is they take all the fat from the animal that gets thrown into the ground beef because these are grass fed, grass finished cattle, they're leaner. So, you know, when you go to the store and you buy, you know, regular ground beef or regular, you know, steaks at Walmart or something like that, they're generally finished off with grain. Now, a lot of people think that if you're buying that, it's all grain fed. Most cattle, 
spends most of its life eating grass and they just bring them into the feedlot at the end to fatten them up. And that was what I was looking for originally because I've always said that I do think that grain finished cattle taste better. There's generally better marbling in there. There is more fat in there. And so I was originally looking for a, some cattle that was grain finished with a non-GMO uh, you know, feed. But we couldn't find anybody in Florida because Florida does have so much grazing land and we have grazing land year round. So right. it's easy for them to be able to just grass feed them all year long. But I was very impressed at seeing this ground beef and seeing you know the different steaks. And there is some phenomenal marbling in them. They are nice and fatty, but there wasn't so much fat on the cattle that uh, we were able to get a bunch of suet to make you know some no. tallow. So he said everything that's left over all got put into the ground beef and it runs down to be about 90-10. Yeah. So overall, I'm super impressed with this experience. We're Me definitely too. planning on in the future when we run out of this beef, uh, purchasing some more. I would highly recommend getting your own share of beef. If you're in a financial situation, again, you don't have to purchase a no. whole share. You can purchase an eighth of a share or a quarter of a share. But at least doing it this way, number one, you're going to know the quality of the beef you're going to get. You know, when you go to the grocery store, as we said, Where you don't know from? what you're getting. How long has it been there? How long was it in the freezer? How long has it been sitting in the refrigerated section? What was it fed over its lifetime? Here, you know everything, you know, like you when it was butchered, what it's been fed. You get that relationship with the local rancher. The only thing I am going to say is once you do use that website, eatwild.com, which again, we don't make any money. We're not an affiliate of them. We just found it to be a phenomenal resource. But once you find that and you narrow down to maybe two or three ranchers, do some reviews of them. Go look at like, you know, Google searches, you know, find out what other people's experience were them. You know, you don't want to find out after you purchase a half a share of beef or a whole share of beef that that was sitting in the guy's freezer for a year. Yeah, absolutely. This is a huge investment and we approached it like we would if we were buying a car, mm -hmm. you know, or, or buying an appliance that costs a lot of money. Like this was a lot of money. This was a big investment for our family, but we knew that we wanted to do this and it was worth the investment of time shopping around. Yep. Well, that is going to be our video for today. Let us know down in the comment section, have you ever purchased some local beef or local poultry or anything from your local farms? Also, let us know what has your experience been when you were purchasing shares of meat from either a rancher or a co-op. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we have a cow, man, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. Bye.